Welcome back to the homestead, y'all. I'm up here in the main garden, been doing some work, some cleanup work. I had a few wicking pots that I wanted to change the dirt out in, so I'm putting the dirt. And I thought I would take a minute and show you some of the cover crops that's still left. We still have some brassicas left, a whole lot of clover left throughout here. We have some peas growing. But the main thing I wanted to show you was the daikon radishes, what they look like after they've grown all winter long and then died back and starting to rot. Now I'll get the camera and I'll zoom in a little closer, but if you watched our video on cover crops from last fall, you heard how much I talked about the daikon radish and how much I loved it, and I'm gonna show you why right now. Plus, I'm gonna take you around, show you some of our other garden spots, and show you the difference in some of the cover crops that we planted in them and what they look like. Okay, so this is what it looks like when a daikon radish grows throughout the winter. And this is the first week of March. So you can see the daikon radishes died. And I want you to look at the size hole that that is left in there. Now there's a water bottle. I can stick that Dasani water bottle right down in there. So that shows you how big a hole. And that, that hole will go all the way down. It'll go down a foot to 18 inches. And then of course the daikon radish is starting to rot. Daikon radish all winter long, they're absorbing up nutrients into the, soil, into the radish itself and they're, they hold a whole lot of nitrogen. I mean a whole lot of nitrogen. So what they're doing is they're absorbing all the nitrogen as they're growing throughout the winter. And then when they start to rot, all the microbes in this area are gonna feed off of this daikon radish. They're gonna sit here, they're gonna feed all spring off of it. And here's a couple more right here. I can pull that one out. You can see they've already ate. Look, there's a little slug on that one right there. They've already ate that radish. I don't know how well you can see on camera, but you can see all the way through that radish. So that means they've, they're sitting there and they're feeding. It's feeding the microbes in the soil. Pull that one out. Of course, it's good and mushy. You can see that one's just mushy. So that's great for all everything that's in the soil, the bacteria. Plus that daikon radish worked like a nitrogen battery for us. It absorbed all the nitrogen, it held it all winter long, so it di the nitrogen didn't get washed away throughout the winter. Plus, this gives a channel all the way down to the end of the root. Of course, now this daikon radish, when it, when it was growing and was mature, it was about that big around, and then they taper down to a point, anywhere from 12 inches to 18 inches down in the soil. So that's put organic matter 12 to 18 inches in the soil, plus the tap root can go as deep as two foot into the soil. So that gave a, gives a channel now, so when it rains, that water is gonna absorb through and stay in our soil. So that way this summer when we're growing vegetables in here, that gives a channel for the water to go. Instead of the water running off and washing our nutrients away, it's absorbing into the soil, so I won't have to irrigate as much because our ground is gonna store more moisture. All these channels and all these daikon radishes that we planted in here, all the triticale that we planted in here, all the chicory, the chicory roots go 18 inches down. When those die out and they rot, that gives channels for water to go down in. So this whole area is gonna be working like a sponge now. It's gonna be absorbing more moisture, more water than what's gonna run off. So that does two things. That holds our moisture in our soil and it keeps our nutrients from washing away. And that's what we want. We don't want to wash our nutrients away if you have hard compacted soil or if you till your soil. Whenever it rains real hard, it's washing your nutrients away. And you don't want that. You want to keep them in your garden spot. So we'll go around here. Like I said, there's three different radishes right here, but I'll take you to some of our other garden spots. I'll show you how they're growing how the cover crops are growing, what cover crops are still left, which is mainly your winter wheat, some of your brassicas that have grown all winter long, your clovers, and some of the chicory still left too. But we'll go look at some of those. We'll look at our area, that five foot by 10 foot area that we grew 400 pounds of food in last year. And then I'm gonna open this all up to my chickens. So that way my chickens can come in here, they can feed on this. That'll help feed my chickens, plus they'll deposit manure back on here, which is just that much more nitrogen. So when we plant our spring garden here in a couple months, we'll have plenty of nitrogen in the soil and we won't have to worry about it. Okay, this is our five foot by 10 foot grow. 
That's where we grew 403 pounds in a five foot by 10 foot area last year. If you haven't seen that video, I'll put a link in the description for it. As you can see, our winter cover crop has done great. You can see there's hairy vetch growing in here. There, we put uh, daikon radishes in here, which most of them have already rotted, but we have lettuces growing in here. We have kale, we have peas growing in here. We have broccoli growing in here right now. So today what I'm gonna do is, it's, I'm gonna go ahead and cut all this netting down and let our chickens and ducks get in here, let them go ahead and eat all this. But I'll take a weed eater, cut it all down, and I have a fresh load of chicken manure compost. I put biochar in here last fall. So once they get done eating all this, we'll weed eat it down to the ground. We'll put a fresh layer of chicken manure compost, and then we'll be ready to plant this for this spring's garden. So this year, we're gonna try to grow more than 403 pounds. Hopefully we can. I'll take you around, I'll show you our, where our tomato grow is, how high it's grown up, but this, this stuff is just taken off this spring. We've had an unusually warm spring. They're forecasting it to be a warm spring, so we may be able to get our garden planted a little bit earlier than we did last year. Last year on May 17th, we got down to 27 degrees, so I had to wait till May 19th to plant this. So I'm hoping to be able to plant this sometime in April this year. I'll keep an eye on the weather. If I can get it planted in April, I know we'll grow more than 403 pounds of food. Plus, I have a couple little tricks that I, that I use in our, in our main garden that I'm gonna do in this one that'll hopefully increase our yield so that way we can grow more food than we did last year in just a five foot by 10 foot area. We're in our spot where we grew our 12 foot tall tomato plants last year. And if you didn't see that video, I'll put the link above or in the description. So that way you can see the entire 2020 growing season. We grew 12 foot tall tomato plants in here. Of course, we grew 14 plants in here last year and I'm not gonna grow that many. It was way too many. I'm gonna grow four, maybe five in here this year. This is a 10 foot by 16 foot area. So I'll grow four or five tomato plants in here, but what I wanted to show you was our cover crop, all our different brassicas that are growing in here. We have some peas, we have triticale still growing, of course, plenty of winter wheat. We have some daikon radish still growing, or that we grew in here. Of course, now it's died and, and rotten down, but all our winter cover crops are doing great. Of course, it's mostly winter wheat in here. And I'll open this up and let my chickens come in here and eat all this. But I wanted to show you this soil. It is full of earthworms. You just grab a handful of it out and you can see, I can just reach down in the soil and you can see how loose it is. This soil is just in great shape. I mean, just great. And that's where we keep these winter cover crops growing in it all winter long. So our nutrients aren't washing away. Just like I was showing you in the main garden spot, our daikon radishes in here, they're rotting. They're holding that new, those nutrients, that nitrogen all winter long. Plus they're feeding the microbes, the roots, you're keeping roots in the soil. Mother nature does not like bare soil. It likes to keep roots in the soil. So you're keeping all your microbes, your mycorrhizal fungi, you're keeping them all happy by keeping winter cover crops in here. You know, you just want to grow anything. The clovers are great. You can see we still have clover growing in here. The clover is pulling nitrogen out of the air and depositing it into your soil. So that's what you want. This is what you want. You want your soil to look like that. And there's some of them earthworms. Of course, that's just a small one, but there's some big earthworms in here. You want your soil to be loose. Look, there's another earthworm. You want to be able to dig down in it with your hands. If you can take your fingers and dig down in your soil like this, then your soil's in great shape. If you, if you can't, then you need to grow winter cover crops in there, the, the ones that'll bust through the hard pan. You know, your daikon radishes will bust through your hard pan. Your chicory will. Chicory will drive roots 18 inches through some of the hardest soils there are. 
So that's what you want to do. You want to grow those, those plants in the winter time that'll bust through that hard pan, that'll give channels for all your moisture to go, for your water to go, and it won't wash away your nutrients. It'll keep your nutrients in here all winter long. So I'm hoping this year we have a warm spring and I can get these tomato plants planted around the 1st of May. If I can do that, I should be able to grow tomato plants taller than 12 feet. I'm gonna have better support for them this year. I have biochar that's gonna go in here. Uh, it's being inoculated right now. So by the time I'm ready to, to plant tomato plants in here, I'll, I'll be able to put biochar. I have some worm castings I'm gonna put in here. And then I have a bunch of chicken compost chicken manure compost that I'm going to put in here. I'll put about a four to six inch layer of chicken manure compost over this whole thing mixed in with the biochar, the worm castings, and hopefully this year we'll have a good crop of tomatoes in here. So if you enjoyed this video, look in the description because I'm going to put several links for our videos from last year on how we grew 400 pounds of food in a five foot by 10 foot area and how we grew 12 foot tall tomato plants in here before our cages collapsed. So if you have any questions on winter cover crops or how we do it, why we do it, um, just leave them below, leave your comments below and I'll get to them as quick as we can. And thanks for watching.